For full episodes of the Diverse Mentality Podcast, check the links in the description below. The full video version is available on the main channel, and the audio version is available on your favorite streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. This is an interesting debate, and this I wanted to bring up because this is something I tweeted while I was listening to T.I. T.I.'s music. I was going through his catalog of music just randomly, and... I noticed something, something that I didn't notice before. I kind of noticed it before, but I didn't really give too much praise to it or attention to it. T.I. dropped the greatest three-peat album run ever. Now, Quake, what the fuck? You're crazy. There's been other artists who dropped three albums that were insane, right? Yeah, of course. There's been a lot of great artists who've done that. Three-peat, three-peat. When I say that, I mean back to back to back, like Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls run, where he won three championships back to back to back. Think, think really hard. What artist, what artist dropped three albums back to back to back? So year after year after year, didn't skip a year. So if it dropped 2000, 2001, 2002, TI's dropped 2006, 2007, 2008. Think, what artist has done that? Not only has done that, but has topped themselves every single time they dropped an album. Not only topped themselves, but was going through the most public scrutiny you could ever imagine. Now, why am I saying this? T.I., I was listening to King, the album, dropped in 2006. What you know about that? Huge record. Uh... I think he has, uh, let me let me make sure, top back. Huge record, right? Um, what else? Let's see. I, I remember the record com- completely. I was just listening to the album, so I don't know the fuck. I, uh, I like my top lead back. What you know about that? Um, Live in the Sky, Jamie Foxx. Why you want to go and do that? Do that. That was another record. So what you know about that, that record peaked at number three on the Hot 100. And to me, it was at this time, T.I., st- Finally, and this is why I'm mentioning these three albums, 2006, King, 2007, TI vs. TIP, 2008, Paper Trail. Now, when I mention these albums on Twitter, people are like, why are you mentioning these albums when his previous ones are better? I'm not talking music quality. We can debate that all day, all day, every day. That's not the debate here. The debate is these albums dropped back to back to back. He topped himself on each album, meaning in sales and charts, all that. He beat himself while going through a huge gun case, while losing his best friend, um, while getting public scrutinized, had to do jail time, had to do a public service, had to redeem himself. While going through all that, he prevailed and managed to drop three albums back to back to back. A Michael Jordan three-peat run. So let's go over the first album, King T.I. Sells 522,000 copies the first week. Is platinum as of 2000 and I believe six which is outdated as fuck. Uh, RIA hasn't updated a lot of TI's albums, so we don't know the final sales of this, but it's platinum, so it's success. 522,000 copies first week. It was at this point, in my, I, I believe, in my eyes, where TI became um, global. He wasn't just a southern king, southern artist, where he was big in the south. Everybody knew he was. This is when I started knowing who, who he was, and I lived in fucking Iowa in the cornfields. I knew who TI was at this point. Uh, he started doing records with Justin Timberlake. Um, he just he had the movie ATL, which was huge. So at this point is when I feel like T.I. got you know, got big and got commercial. So that's why I'm mentioning these three albums. Then you got my favorite, my personal favorite T.I. album, T.I. versus T.I.P. This is when he was going through the gun charges. So his his friend Phil passed away. It was a hit that was intended for T.I. He was in the back of a, a van um, when bullets ringed. You know, bullets just flew. Let me get the story 100% so I can actually, you know, go over it. Uh, was killed in a, was killed as he rode in a van with the rapper. So, yeah, this is this is where I remember the story being. Um, so, Philant Johnson was T.I.'s best friend and manager at the time. He ended up dying, hit their their van, got sprayed up. It was a hit that was intended for T.I. 
T.I. was right behind him. Philan ended up dying. T.I. was okay. Ever since then, T.I. was, T.I. said he, he, you know, he had PTSD and he was worried someone was coming after him. And that's when he started getting the guns. And then rightfully, you know, um, not rightfully, but uh, right on time on the BT Awards, they find him with all those guns, get him locked up. It was an infamous moment. This is in the mid of 2007 when he's gearing up to drop a T.I. versus T.I.P. his album. He's beefing with Shawty Lowe at the time. Rest in peace to him. That album drops. Debuts at number one. Sells 470,000 copies first week. Now you could say, you know what? That's a drop from 550,000 from the first album. True, true. Or 522,000 copies from the first, from the King album. That is a drop in first week sales. But with everything that was going on, kind of made sense. And then the album ended up going platinum as well. Uh, and this is my favorite album, by the way. Uh, a lot of these records are just fucking beautiful. Big Shit Poppin' is is one of my favorites. Uh, the record's at number nine on the Hot 100. You know what it is. That number, what, we had that at number 34 on the Hot 100. Um, you had Touchdown featuring Eminem. You had a bunch of records. And you could argue this is where T.I., you know, you could say, ah, uh, he kind of fell off a little bit, this and that. That one was huge. It was a success. I loved it. My favorite T.I. album. Going through all this scrutiny, public scrutiny, dealing with gun charges, dealing with possibly never getting out of prison for a while, um, he still manages to record music and drop another album. And this is when T.I. went straight. People say he went straight pop. It was catering to more of a commercial audience. And you could say that. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Paper Trail comes out September 30th, 2008. Mind you, this is back-to-back. 2006, King. 2007, T.I. versus T.I.P. 2008, Paper Trail. Paper Trail does 568,000 for copies first week. Tops King, Tops T.I. versus T.I.P. Goes double platinum, RIA certified double platinum. So it's top both those albums as we know for right now. We don't know what the sales are of today's time, but based off these numbers, it's double platinum. So it's more than those previous albums. Um, gets his first number one record with Whatever You Like. That actually peaks at number let me see. I think it was number, yeah. Number one, whatever you like. Uh, you got Live Your Life. I believe that even peaked at number one. Let me see, just to make sure. That peaked at number one. So you have two number one records on here. Um, what else? You got Swagger Like Us, Jay-Z Kanye, uh, Jay-Z Lil Wayne, number five on the Hot 100. Just killing it, right? Hit after hit after hit, Dead and Gone, Justin Timberlake. That uh, that peaked at number two. So just hit records. Like, like this album was just bona fide hit after hit after hit. I'm sure this album's five times platinum by now. I'm surprised there's no updated numbers on it. But I thought about all the circumstances, all him topping himself in album sales, becoming commercially relevant, doing a three-peat release and back to back to back. I said it was the greatest three-peat album run of all time. So I looked, people were responding. People were responding with artists that weren't even dropping albums back to back like that. They said Kanye, they said Jay-Z. Well, one person that mentioned Jay-Z was right. He did drop a lot of back-to-back albums. He actually did a six-album run. He did a Michael Jordan, you know, six championships uh, run. But the thing with Jay-Z is he never... I want to say he went, He didn't top himself, but he he really wasn't going through public scrutiny. I mean, he was going through, you know, battling Jay-Z, I mean, Nas, and then Dame Dash situation, but that was later down the line. Um but he never really, really hit that commercial, like I was saying, like commercial around that time, like 2000 to 2003. He had a few records here and there, but it wasn't like T.I. Not number one, number one, number one, number two, number five. Like, it wasn't that. It definitely wasn't that. Didn't have his own movie, ATL, out like that. Um, it just wasn't. It wasn't T.I.'s run. And then somebody else mentioned DMX. That was dropping those two albums and the third album, back to back. That was two albums in one year, and then 1999, he dropped another album. That was an amazing run that I could I could say, yeah, that, that's almost equivalent to T.I.'s. But the thing with that is, is he never really had a lot of singles that hit, you know, number one. But he did sell albums. I mean, the album went five times platinum. The other one, I think, four times platinum. The other one did, like, three. So he did sell albums. And first week sales, though, he did decline on the third album. I think on the second album, he did the most. Let me actually look it up because I know the first, the first one, he did, like, 100,000, 150,000 first week. And then it was like the second album, he does like 400, 600,000, some shit like that. Let's see. So it's Dark Hell is High, the first one. Um, that did 251,000 copies, which is great. Second one comes out, he does 670,000 copies first week. And the third one comes out, and he does 
six hundred, basically almost seven hundred thousand. So he did top himself. This is the only one that you could argue is a better run. But in terms of singles, he didn't reach what Ti reached. And then in terms of public scrutiny and having to deal with a lot of public things, he didn't really have to. Um, so that's why, if you guys could come up with an artist that did three peat back to back to back, I was looking at Eminem. He almost did. He missed a year. But I, I was going to say Eminem then if, if Eminem would have reached that. Um, there's no other artist I can think of, though. A drop back to back. Somebody mentioned Ludacris. I looked at He missed a year or two. But that's hard to do, man, especially going through what he was going through. So um, that was just a dope debate. I think T.I., I, I want to do a video on that in the future. I want to I highlight that. That's a moment in hip-hop that people don't even realize, don't even appreciate, I guess. So, um, yeah, 